Hey guys, today I'm filming my monthly makeup ranking for January. I have 10 products to rank for you today. Nothing that I like super hate, but I would say there are three products that are disappointing, two that are good, and five that are favorites. So at number 10 would be the Grande Cosmetics Grande Mascara. I decided to test out this mini because I have a full size that I got as a freebie and wanted to see if I wanted to pass it on or not. This is what just happened when I took it out. If you can see that clumpage on there, super gross, right? But it just is the most basic wand and it just doesn't do anything for my lashes. I used it on this eye today, but I did go over top with the Smashbox Super Fan Mascara and it helped a lot. And I just like, I don't think it did anything. So I will definitely be passing on my full size and hopefully it works for somebody else. I will continue to use this, but it just doesn't do anything. And I know this is super expensive, so no. Next at number nine is the Beauty Counter Color Intense Lipstick in Backstage. And I actually think this is a really nice formula. It has a really wonderful menthol set, which I really like. And it is a full coverage lipstick. It has a really nice creamy finish, but not too slippery. I actually like the formula of this a lot. It's just that this color is not something I would use. I was hoping it'd be a little bit more pink and really just the shades in this line aren't very me, but I really wanted to try one out. It has a nice shine to it. So anyway, I think this is a good formula. I'm probably gonna play around with the shade a little bit more. And if I still not loving it, I'll probably give this to my mom. My mom just uses clean beauty and I think that she would really like this and I would love to introduce her to beauty counter because currently she uses products from Lemon Grass Spa which is great but I think beauty counters products are a little bit more trendy where Lemon Grass has like a lot of loose products beauty counter has pressed products which I just like better so anyway I might have her try this out and see what she thinks of it again really nice formula I just don't love that color on me Next at number eight is something that just disappointed me. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Metropolis palette. And I have not tried the brush that came with it. So I think these three shades are permanent, probably came from the full size Metropolis palette. And then these are the two new shades. These are so boring. And I like, this is too cool tone, I think, to go with these other shades. If these two colors were different, I would have liked this so much more. These other three, I think, perform quite nicely. I did create two different looks with those. They're pretty. This, I thought, was more of a matte cream, but on my skin tone, it's like a super light tan shade. But I really, really have tried to layer it up to even get it show up on me, so it's just like a weird color. It seems like it needs to be a little lighter or a little darker, but for only having five shadows, these seem like two boring shades to add in here. I don't go to these palettes necessarily for a full look, but I just don't think that those go personally. And I just feel like if we're only having five shades, I would rather it be two more fun shades. Like it could still be like two more mattes, but like different colors. If you know what I mean? I feel like this just needs to be a little bit warmer, a little light lighter or darker. But the other three I think are very nice, good formulas, pretty shades. And I want to use this palette with others a little bit more to hopefully get some more use out of it. But out of all the five pans, this was limited edition anyway, but if you didn't get this one, you're good. Although I'm very annoyed I did not get the full size palette. I wish that she would like make an announcement when she's finally getting rid of something. That way we can all go snatch it up before it's gone. So that's a disappointment. Then we have the two palettes that I think are fine. And you're gonna be surprised which one is ranking lower. Natasha Denona Love Palette. So I actually did not want this for the longest time because I just felt like something about this was not my vibe. And then it went half off at Sephora, so I did buy it. I don't regret buying this because I did create some really pretty looks with it, which I will have those Makeup of the Days on Instagram linked down below for you. And I don't know what it is. There's just something about this I don't love. I think that I would be happy to completely get rid of this row. I wouldn't use that dark shade. Everything else I feel like I would use. But 
but just when I look at this, I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. The quality is good, but I'm just not like in love with this one. So I don't regret having it for the 50% off, but if I just had it for 20% off, I'd be disappointed. Not in formula wise, just for the colors, but there was one look in particular where I believe I was wearing the M Cosmetics liquid lipstick in Rose Nude. And I loved that look a lot. But other than that, other looks I created, I thought were like pretty, but not amazing. Then at number six, we have the ColourPop Wine and Only palette. I like everything in here except for that stupid matte with glitter. ColourPop needs to cut it out with that mess. This is also a matte with glitter. I use that shade a lot because it is a lighter color. I use it as a transition color, but because of that glitter, it just like, poof, kick up in the pan, fall out on your face. It is so irritating. I literally would never understand why they make that formula of shadow because it's such a mess. And uh, the this one, I don't think I used, but I used all the other shades. I was very impressed with how well these deeper mattes blended, especially for being reds. They were really nice. The shimmers looked very beautiful. I especially love that shimmery red. So this was a good palette. I got some nice looks out of this. I think I even made a look with the darker one as well. And it is nice, not necessary to have. I'm sure I have all of these shades in other palettes, but it's a good palette. It does remind me of the Naked Cherry. If you take out like that lighter matte peach and even that lighter matte pink, which are my favorite shades from that palette, this is good. This is good. I do like this. I probably could do without the both of these in my collection, but I'm not going to be getting rid of them anytime soon. And then I would consider my top five in the favorite category. At number five, we have the Fit Glow Beauty Lip Color Serums. I purchased these because of State of Kate. She did post a lip swatch video on her YouTube channel, and then she does have arm swatches on her Instagram and probably in her video as well. I will link that for you guys. And Kate really helped me narrow down the two shades I chose to pick up. I had a 30% off code that I found online and these are very expensive. So we'll see if I end up buying more, but I do really like these and they did throw in this little mini as a free sample with my purchase, which is awesome. And this is the shade Regal. I'm wearing it today. This is a purpley pink color. And then the other two shades I have would be nudie and buff nudie is more of a pink nude and buff is more of a peachy nude i did post a first impression reel and a lip swatch reel on my instagram i will have those linked down below if you can please go check them out and like them save them to show me some support i would appreciate that a lot i actually didn't realize how important the save button was for engagement like i didn't realize it but i saw some people post about like how much that has really helped them out and with with instagram like recommending their post so you can actually like when you save a picture or reel or video whatever you can actually save it to a collection and it almost is like a pinterest board which is really cute so i now have one for like makeup looks I'm inspired by, indie products, cool reels, because Tara Brooke makes the best reels. And it's also a good place to save reels or videos that you might want to take the sound from to use on your reels. So I'm definitely going to start doing that for people moving forward. And I take so many screenshots on my phone, like at least this will save my phone some storage space. So think of it that way, if in no other way. So here are the swatches of shades I have, Buff, Nudie, and Regal. So you can see that they do have some nice shine to them to make the lips look a little bit fuller, but these are not the most like shiny glosses ever, but I think just enough. And these do also give, I'd say like a medium opacity on the lips, which I like. I don't like glosses that are fully opaque like the ABH glosses. Those just scared me. This is just like the perfect opacity. I also really like this texture. I was worried it would feel too thick but I don't think they do. They are not super thin and slippery, not too heavy, thick, or sticky. Like, not sticky at all. So these are really nice. I really enjoy them. They're so expensive though. So only if you can get them for a really good deal would I recommend purchasing them, but 
I like them a lot. And then at number four, we have the Pat McGrath Cheek Palette. And this is the lighter version, Galactic Sun. So you have Divine Rose Blush, Desert Orchid Blush, and Golden Nectar Highlighter. I believe all of these are permanent. This highlight is amazing. The color is so pretty, but it is so smooth. It gives a really intense glow on the cheeks, but I don't really feel like it just like sits on top. I think it melts in very nicely. It is not like a thick chunky formula. It's really nice and actually right there it looks like it'd be too dark for me but it doesn't look dark on my cheeks. Really pretty and then I really like these blushes as well. I actually do not mind that these are permanent products. If you already have them as individuals you might be a little bit bummed by that that she wasn't releasing new shades and I hope that she will but I like the format of this. I don't need a bunch of individual blushes. This is enough blush for me. I love being able to try the highlight formula as well or one of her highlight formulas. I think her others aren't exactly the same as this, but the packaging is nice and sleek. I really like this a lot and I'm excited that she did with a Bridgerton collection because I hope that means she'll do more in the future and hopefully she will have new shades, not repeating shades. I think that some of the Bridgerton products were in the darker version of this palette or at least the highlight is. So I hope she will switch it up but this is a really great product. I really enjoyed using it. I thought the quality was very, very nice. And then at number three is a surprise favorite that I've been using a lot this month that I just decided to use because I haven't used it maybe ever or maybe like twice because I've been panning bronzers for the past couple of years. And this is the Too Faced Sweetheart Bronzer in Sweet Tea. And this does have two different colors as you see, but this is a shimmer bronzer. So I do definitely make sure that my skin is completely set. Otherwise it will like stick to my wet foundation and look very shimmery. But when I apply this over powdered skin, I think it looks great. I am wearing this today, but I do also have a cream bronzer under foundation, a liquid bronzer on top of foundation, and then powder bronzer on top. Very crazy, I know, but like I'm panning products right now. But I think this looks really nice. I like the way that it blends. I think this is a nice color. It is a little bit more on like the warm side. I think I'm going to love using this this spring. I plan on using it so much and I'm so glad I finally used it. I remember that Sam Sherman, this was her favorite bronzer for like ever. Very good. I got this half off Ulta 21 Days of Beauty a couple years ago. If they have it this upcoming 21 Days of Beauty, I really recommend it if you're looking for a shimmery bronzer. It's not glittery, but it does have a lot of shimmer and I would really recommend that you set your face under this. But I'm just so impressed with how much I like it. That's why it ranked higher than the Pat McGrath. Then number two is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette, the light version. And I did film a demo and review of this for my Instagram as well. I will have that linked. So you do have a cream blush that's more of like a really like stiff formula, cream to powder, powder highlight, thank goodness. Then you've got two metallic shadows and then three mattes. And the formula of the shamer shades in here is different. It is a little bit flakier, but it also looks more foiled on the eye. I don't care that there's fallout. I can just wipe it away. The mattes in here are pigmented, blend very nicely. I think this would be a great go-to palette if you are someone that is doing your makeup on the go. If you're a teacher, you have to get ready early in the morning or if you get ready at work or in the car. I am now going to the office once a week and I, as of last week, packed like a little makeup bag to put in our room so I can just get ready in the bathroom really quickly. And I can see myself using this a lot because it's like fewer products to, to lug back and forth. The quality is really good. The only thing that I would change would be like this cream blush is a little too stiff. I wish that it was just like a little creamier because I think that it could blend even better on the skin. But I do think this is very nice. I was impressed with the highlight. It looks like it'd be a little bit dark for me, but because it's so shimmery, it looks great. So really impressed with this. I know it's like nothing like super special or different and it's neutral, but like really good, kind of like all in one go-to palette. And then ranked at number one is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. I'm wearing this on my eyes today. I've created several looks with it. Again, the looks that I create with all of these palettes that I post on Instagram, which was every look, will be down below. And 
I really loved this palette and I think like you really need to swatch the shades to see how special they are because you don't exactly notice it just looking at them in the pan and I did use almost every color there were a few I did not get to but I at least swatched them I of course did not use that eyeshadow she put it in this palette just to be talked about because I can guarantee no one actually liked it and if she would have watched 10 reviews she could have seen that 10 out of 10 people hated that eyeshadow if you can even call it that but you guys may know my favorite color in here is this color gratitude this is a gorgeous rosy brown and it pulls much more rosy on the eye and I was really looking for a good transition color for the wine and only palette and I couldn't really find one and that worked so well with this palette that shade just really transforms because when I look at it and aura I'm just like oh wow that's kind of weird that there are like two browns in this palette I mean it goes really well with this shimmer this look right here is amazing I loved that so much but today I am wearing abundance which is this purpley taupe color I'm wearing that on my lid then for my transition color I'm using this color radiate which shows up a little bit pinker than it looks here here it looks kind of gray but it does show up more pink then I use gratitude as my crease color and aura in my outer corner does it necessarily look like I'm wearing browns I don't think so I think that really pulls that nice pinky color and I'm just so surprised by how even the mattes transform in this palette and how well they work with other things I was so impressed by them then she does have some marbled shades in here like this one right here and this shade here that were very very beautiful I really like those I know in some other palettes I was like oh you know I didn't love them as much I actually like the abundant shade I'm wearing today that regular shimmer formula I think is amazing and I want more of those so I'm glad that there are those in this palette abundance is that way empowered is that way joy is that way but joy is a duochrome shade and there are other duochromes in here blissful is a duochrome and magic moon you can see here blue pink Cosmic Loves, the Duo Chrome. They're just really special. I really like the looks that I created and I wish that I could make even more. But this look right here was so amazing. Of course, I picked like the non-purple shade in here. But I'm so impressed by those two mattes and how will they transform. I've told you guys so many times that I don't recommend the Obsessions Palace because like you never know what you're gonna get. I think that the, the nude Obsessions are very good. I've gotten rid of all the rest of them. I don't plan on buying any more. Her large palettes though, I think are excellent. I've never had an issue with the quality of these. I have them all except for her original one. And it's so good. Highly, highly recommend. I'm very, very impressed with this. Just like so good. And even the darker colors. Mantra, I did use a little bit of that in my outer corner and I was very surprised with how well that blended, especially because I'm not the best at blending but like it was not patchy, it didn't completely blend away, it didn't stick in place. Very good formula, very pretty shades. I'm so, so happy that I have that palette. So guys, even though we only talked about 10 things, I still managed to make this a 20 minute video. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I would love to hear your thoughts on these products in the comments down below and just other things that you have tried recently. Let me know your thoughts on them. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.